Hi, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I hope that you can hear me. Let me know if you cannot. Let me just turn the open the chat window. Okay. Um, sorry. Can you hear me? I think I can hear you fine. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes, I just heard hear you, and I was just trying to guess whether the first part was a negation or affirmation. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so, so here you have a reminder of uh, what we started last time. Uh, but before we move on to that, uh, let me just say that uh, homework. Hmm. Okay, I thought I had home. I hear. Um, that uh, homework number two is uh, online. So let's uh, just uh, take a quick look. So uh, some of the questions are different uh, statements that I mentioned uh, in passing in class uh, and uh, either said uh, they are exercises or sort of gave some hint of why they should be true. Uh, some of them are quite important, which is why I'm giving them for homeworks. Um, so let's see. So, so exercise number one. Okay, so separable subalgebra of ultra power of the car algebra uh, and an automorphism of that algebra that does not extend to an automorphism uh, of the entire algebra, right? So just have to come up uh, with uh, another abstraction for extending automorphisms. Um, and uh, exercise two is uh, sort of related to. Uh, curious open question of Eberhard Kirchberg. Uh, there is this uh, Kuntz algebra of two uh, and um, Kirchberg asked, uh, does every separable cyst algebra embed into ultra power of O2? Uh, that is as far as I know open, uh, but uh, what is quite easy to prove is sort of a poor man's affirmative version of that. Uh, which is that there exists a separable cyst algebra such that every separable cyst algebra is isomorphic to its subalgebra. So uh, Kirchberg's question is uh, kind of a cyst algebraic analog uh, of a cons embedding problem. And also in case of a cons embedding problem, there is uh, affirmative poor man's answer. Uh, there is a two one factor so that all uh, two one factors embed into its uh, trace ultra power. Uh, next uh, question is, all right, so, so, so uh, next exercise is actually something uh, that I'll be using today several times. I sort of hinted uh, why it should be true in class last time, uh, but I didn't really prove it because the proof is not very exciting, uh, but it is a good uh, proof to go over. So I definitely recommend uh, that, that you try to work on this one. You have two elemental equivalent cyst algebras and you have type uh, over the empty set. Uh, and then you need to prove that, that T is approximately satisfiable in one of them if and only if it is approximately satisfiable in the other one. Uh, there is also obvious version uh, where type uh, T is type over some uh, set which is a subset of both A and B. Um, you just have to be careful stating it, but uh, but anyway, this is the form that we're going to need. Uh, exercise four is something that I stated in class as a theorem of Efros and Rosenberg. Uh, of course, it, it was a theorem back in the 70s or 80s, maybe, maybe 80s, around 1980. But right now it's an exercise. So so um, so so uh, basically, question is: uh, you have a finite dimensional cyst algebra. Um, and uh, you need to prove that for any separable unit of cyst algebra, you have these four equivalent statements. Um, th they are also equivalent to, to yet another statement which I stated uh, in class, but, but uh, just this is an exercise. Uh, number five is um, silly things, so, so I'm not going to say anything about it. It's a trick question. Uh, number six uh, is about ultra powers of Banach spaces, uh, not cyst algebras, which are just defined in, in natural way, right? So you just take the L infinity and mod out uh, by this ideal of um, uh, sequences uh, which whose norms converge uh, to zero along the ultra filter. Uh, so uh, question is to prove uh, that every ultra power of a Hilbert space uh, is uh, fully saturated, meaning that, that in definition of countably saturated, you just drop countably and just ask for any type 
uh, of cardinality smaller than density character of your algebra, of your finite space in this case, uh, which is uh, approximately satisfiable is actually realized in the algebra. Again, not in the algebra, in the minus space. Um, so this is very easy question if you look at it uh, from the right point of view. And exercise number seven, uh, it is about spatial tensor products, which I haven't used, but uh, you know some of them know what what, uh, what definition is. It's, it's a natural definition. So um, a question is that if you have two uh, Swiss algebras, uh, how does uh, taking ultra power um, Agree with taking ultra uh, with taking tensor products. Uh, there is obvious embedding uh, of tensor of ultra powers into ultra power of tensors, uh, but uh, that embedding is not surjective uh, unless uh, it is surjective for a trivial reason uh, that, that one of the algebras is finite dimensional. Uh, so, so, so that, that, that's that's the question. Mm. I mean. Uh, Positive answer to this uh, follows from a uh, safe theory that I mentioned a couple of classes ago, that uh, every uh, countably degree one saturated cyst algebra uh, is uh, tensorially decomposable, but, but this is much easier than that. So, so you're not allowed to use uh, big guns uh, like that theorem uh, in this exercise. Okay, so let's go back to class. Oh. And let's go back to the right file. Um, so uh, let's uh, take a look uh, what's going on. So we are continuing the proof of a version of Kiesler's theorem that uh, all ultra powers of fixed separable cyst algebra uh, associated with non-principal ultra filters on N are isomorphic. And we are assuming continuum hypothesis and uh, you know, the useful formulation of continuum hypothesis is that uh, every set of cardinality continuum can be well ordered so that all proper initial segments are countable. Now we proved uh, all sorts of things last time, but here are two lemmas that I'm going to need. Uh, first one is uh, if C is a cyst algebra of density character alpha one, then uh, it has this filtration. Uh, it can be uh, represented as an inductive limit of separable uh, elementary submodels uh, but not just inductive limit, uh, this uh, chain is continuous uh, under order and also C is actually the union of this chain, uh, not just the uh, inductive limit. And the second lemma is that uh, if you have two C algebras of so that form, uh, density character F1, um, and you have isomorphism between them, then uh, you can write uh, each one of A and B as uh, in the form, as in the previous lemma. But moreover, uh, these filtrations are compatible uh, with this um, isomorphism. Phi sends alpha algebra onto alpha algebra. So the, the entire uh, diagram, if you want, phi mapping A to B has this filtration into separable sub diagrams. And the whole point here was uh, that this tells us exactly uh, what an isomorphism between algebras of this sort uh, has to look like. And it tells us uh, that that uh, basically gives us a hint of uh, how we should try to construct an isomorphism. Uh, right, so, so somehow go along uh, separable elementary substructures uh, and uh, do uh, induction, well, induction uh, up to LF1. Oh yes, uh, one more thing uh, before uh, we start uh, new material. Uh, thanks to, to Ben uh, for pointing this out. Uh, I said uh, that something was an open problem. Uh, it wasn't open problem. Uh, I had in mind uh, something. So let me just read it. Uh, so it is known that there are unital separable AF algebras A and B, which are elemental equivalent, but not isomorphic. Uh, what I should have said and what I was thinking is that there is no ex explicit example of a pair of simple algebras of this form. Um, uh, there is a family of uh, examples which are simple in a meta-mathematical way that they are, they're not uh, that difficult uh, to come up with uh, due to Eagle and Vignati. Um, take uh, any countable in decomposable ordinals. So I should define what this means. It means that if you write alpha as the sum of two ordinals, 
And how do you define sum of ordinals? Well, remember, uh, ordinals are just uh, well-ordered uh, sets, uh, really uh, ordered types of well-ordered sets. So I just take first ordinal and just slap uh, the second ordinal on top of it and look at the ordering, which is the union of, of, of these two. Uh, so in the composable means that, that if you write it as a sum of two ordinals, then uh, beta is less than alpha and gamma is less than alpha. <clears throat> so you cannot write it as a sum of two smaller ordinals. For example, omega plus omega is not in the composable, uh, right? So it's, it's written as uh, omega plus omega. Uh, and uh, you know, to, to, to get to the first in the composable ordinals, ordinal, you have to add omega infinitely many times to itself and get the omega squared. The, the definition of the composable ordinal. If alpha is the I sum of two ordinals, it can be the sum of two smaller ordinals. Omega plus omega is... is oh, 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 yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Mattel. Of course, yes, yeah, this was silly. Uh, this was, I uh, inserted negation somewhere along the way. Um, right, so, so it implies that alpha is beta or, thanks, thanks a lot, or alpha is gamma. I mean, basically I started, discussion was correct. I just forgot. Um, uh, swap definitions. So, so what I said after was uh, correct. Uh, the least uh, in the composable ordinal greater than omega is omega squared. Uh, the next one is omega to the third and so on. And then you, there are all F one of them. Uh, so uh, if you look at uh, alpha plus one, it is a successor ordinal. Um, it has a natural compact uh, matrix space topology. It's not just the ordinal, the order topology, in which open sets really open intervals is compact metrizable. Uh, these are all uh, non-isomorphic as ceased algebras, but they're all elementary element, which is the effect about uh, Boolean algebras. But anyway, uh, let's go uh, back to, um, to our proof. Uh, in the proof, uh, we'll need two facts about uh, types and elementary equivalence. Uh, so uh, first thing is uh, just uh, somewhat tweaking the language uh, as we defined it before. If you have a C star algebra A, actually uh, you have C star algebra B, earlier on I defined uh, for a sub algebra A of B uh, language, but it just didn't matter that A was a sub algebra. Uh, because we just used elements of A as uh, constants uh, to form terms of our language. So I can take arbitrary subset. Uh, basically, uh, really, uh, if I'm looking at, at uh, formulas over a subset, they're pretty much, no, no, not really, but, but uh, they, they are dense uh, in the set of formulas uh, over a subalgebra generated by X, but it's just going to be easier to, to think about it this way. So, so we can talk about formulas and types over X subset of A. Now, uh, if you're a logician, you see uh, that uh, I'm basically jumping through some hoops because I'm just trying to avoid talking about um, language, adding constants, interpretation of constants. That's really what I'm doing here, but I just want to stay as uh, semantic as possible and um, uh, uh, light on syntax, uh, as light on syntax uh, as possible. Okay, so here's the lemma. If T is a type over some subset X of A, and we have elementary embedding from A into C, uh, and also uh, then you can conclude that T is approximately satisfiable in A if and only if uh, the following type, uh, phi of t. So what is phi of t? Well, uh, you see formulas, conditions in, in uh, t uh, have references to elements uh, of x. We just apply phi to them and just uh, replace every x with phi of x in each, each of these formulas. Okay, I shouldn't be saying x. Let me say a because when I say x, it looks like a variable. I'm not talking about variables. I'm talking about a, uh, about constants. So just replace them and uh, you have this type phi of t. Really uh, what I'm doing is uh, extending uh, elementary embedding between algebras to, to embedding between formulas over those algebras. Um, so, uh, so T is approximately satisfiable in A if and only if phi of T is approximately satisfiable in C. Uh, proving this just amounts to, to, to checking uh, definitions. 
So, um, so, so uh, we'll be using it. And the second fact is an uh, exercise about uh, the way that, that um, uh, the relation of being elementary submodel works. Uh, first part is transitivity. That one is uh, reasonably straightforward. Second is marginally more interesting. Uh, here we have big algebra C, and then we have smaller algebra B, and even smaller one A. A is elementary in C and B is elementary in C. Well, then we can uh, conclude that A is elementary in B. Proof is actually identical to the proof of the first part. It just maybe looks uh, slightly more uh, surprising. Um, and the third one um, uh, talks about so-called elementary chains. Uh, here we have a C star algebra C, and we have this increasing sequence of elementary submodels. Uh, of C, so they're all elementary and they're subset. Now, now by, by part two, A n is actually elementary in n plus one. Uh, then we can conclude that, that if we take union of this chain, it is not a C algebra. We have to take closure. That is elementary in C. Uh, again, uh, straightforward check. So I'll, I'll be using uh, these facts in uh, what is uh, coming up. And uh, here is uh, the important property, really, what, uh, what we characterize as uh, countably saturated algebras. Suppose C is countably saturated. Now, uh, if you have a separable algebra, which is elemental equivalent to C, then uh, it can be uh, embedded into C elementarily. And the second part, Okay, let, let's first look at the proof of the first part and we'll come back uh, for the second part. So um, uh, to prove part one, so this is proof of part one, uh, we fix a sequence uh, which is dense in A. Uh, now I look at type of uh, the first element in the sequence. Right? I, I start counting at zero because I'm a set theorist. Um, look at a type of A0 over the empty set. Uh, well, uh, by lemma from the beginning, this is approximately satisfiable in C uh, because uh, A and C are elemental equivalent. Sorry, this is, this is by the homework. There is a homework, right? So A and C are elemental equivalent. So type is uh, satisfiable in one if and only if it's satisfiable in the other. Uh, so it's approximately satisfiable in C. And because of that, uh, we can fix some C0 in C such that type of A0 over empty set in A is equal to type of C0 over empty set in C. And uh, this is uh, you know, our first step. So we know that A0 is going to go to C0 in our elementary embedding. Uh, but we have to see where the other ones go. I think I typed this. Yes, okay. Uh, so uh, we define phi of a m by recursion. So phi of a zero was that c zero that, that we found. And, and here's our inductive assumption. Uh, at each step, we look at a type of the next element over what we have so far. So here is a, here a zero, a one, a2, let's say, and let's say here is A3. Let's say we took care of, of uh, these three here. And now uh, we have phi of A0, phi of A1, phi of A2 here. Uh, look at uh, the image phi of this type, uh, phi of the type uh, of, of A3. And uh, it is uh, approximately satisfiable in C. So we can find something, some candidate uh, that is going to be our phi of A3. Right. So uh, because this is uh, countable, we just do one by one and just uh, find uh, images uh, of each of those, uh, of all of these elements. Uh, now, uh, because uh, type uh, of something codes all sorts of information, but in particular, it codes uh, distances and it codes uh, algebraic operations. Uh, this phi is uh, going to be isometric and it will respect uh, algebraic operations. So if, if I took some extra care to make sure that, that uh, uh, this is a star algebra over uh, complex rationals, uh, 
C would uh, have actually respected the operations, but it doesn't really matter. It's going to respect them approximately as much as necessary. So uh, by just using countable saturation of C, you pick up uh, uh, these elements one by one. And uh, at the end of the day, you have mapped from dense subset of A into C and uh, completion, continuous extension of uh, that map to all of A is an elementary embedding. Uh, part two has a very similar proof, a slightly different statement. Let me just draw it. So for part two, we have this. So here is C and here is A sitting inside B. And uh, we already committed to an elementary embedding from phi, a phi from, from A into C. Here is the image of A. Uh, what the statement says is that uh, we can extend phi to an elementary embedding of B into C. So here uh, in the statement, I have C is an elementary embedding, but here I'm just assuming that that C is identity on A, if it's the same thing. And the proof is literally identical uh, to, to, to what we had before. Just choose a countable dense subset of B and uh, just find image of one by one of, of, of those elements. Right, so you're starting with B0, you're looking at type over B of B0 over A. Now, because phi is an elementary embedding, and this is absolutely necessary. If phi wasn't elementary, uh, all sorts of things could go wrong. But because phi was elementary, uh, so this is type T, if I, oops, if I look at type phi of T, it is going to be type uh, over uh, the image of A, it is approximately satisfiable and therefore I can find here candidate for state of B0 and, and just go on, right? So, so everything uh, relies only on countable uh, amount of information and countable saturation gives us uh, what we need. Okay, so, so uh, I should say these two properties together characterize countably saturated models. So you can think of them as, as you know, categorically. So, so they, they are separably universal, uh, separably injectively universal. And also I think this is called, I forgot what it's, uh, I think it's called injective, injectively. Well, whatever, uh, they have uh, these two universality properties. Okay, so uh, here is the theorem. Finally, uh, so uh, if we have two countably saturated elemental equivalent of density character Aleph one um, algebras, then they are isomorphic. Right, so this is what uh, we wanted to prove. And uh, let's see how it goes. So first we write each one of them as uh, unions of continuous chains to elementary submodels. Oh, uh, I forgot to say separable, but of course they won't separable. Right, you want to deal with a countable amount of information at every stage. And uh, here is uh, what, uh, what we planned to do. Uh, we'll find these uh, increasing families of ordinals. So alpha of C and beta of C are ordinals. Uh, I'll just add a page that I can draw. Um, and elementary embeddings, uh, fix C from C alpha C to D. Well, let me start drawing this so, so that, that, that uh, it makes more sense. So here is C, here is D. So uh, we had a similar statement uh, before uh, in the last class, but we are going to a subsequence uh, of uh, subsequences of uh, this filtration. So we have C alpha zero, and we define phi zero from there into something. So uh, the image of C alpha zero uh, will be a separable elementary submodel of D and uh, because D is the union of that chain, there is going to be a big enough element uh, in uh, this chain 
big enough index beta of zero so that that uh, phi zero of C alpha zero is subalgebra of that. Now we just turn the tables around and find C C zero which maps this D beta zero into C. Now, uh, before I go on to, to read uh, all the uh, requirements on these maps, let's just see how we do that. So in the first stage, we look at C alpha zero, we might as well take alpha zero to be zero, which is not really important. So I just going to raise it. So, so uh, just take alpha zero to be zero. What is C alpha zero is a separable uh, algebra, which is elemental equivalent to D. By that universality property of saturated models, there is an elementary embedding of C0 into D, and that is our phi zero. So, so, so phi zero is given by that lemma one, by, by, by first part of the lemma. Okay, so now uh, we have this image, we find beta zero big enough. And now we just look at uh, the inverse to phi zero. Let me use, use a different color uh, for uh, going the other way around. So now we have uh, elementary embedding from here, this image into, uh, into C. This is elementary because C alpha zero was elementary in C. And we have this big algebra. So uh, by the second part of the lemma, this elementary embedding can be extended to this bigger separable algebra. And that is C zero. And so C0 is an elementary extension of that. So here is an image of uh, D beta zero. Again, it is separable. So, so uh, it is subset of some big enough C alpha one, still separable. But now what do we have? Now uh, we have, we are now looking at the uh, inverse of C0, sending this subalgebra Okay, maybe I should, uh, sorry, I am, this is going to look very kitschy, but, but, but uh, maybe it is a good idea to use more colors here. So now we look at C0 inverse. It is an elementary submodel of uh, this, uh, I mean, it is elementary embedding of uh, this model into D. And here is a bigger algebra. So we can extend it to an embedding of this entire thing. And that is our phi one. So we have image here, and then we again take a bigger algebra and go back. So we go on like that. At limit stage, we just take union of uh, these um, chains and note that, that all of these maps extended each other. So we can take unions of maps. And now uh, by one of the earlier lemmas, if you have uh, elementary, a chain of elementary submodels, uh, it's union, uh, Okay, the closure of its union is an elementary submodel. So again, we are back uh, in, in, in our good situation. Right? So after countably many stages, if this is the first uh, limit uh, ordinal, we have uh, isomorphism between these models. So we just move on. Now, okay, the situation is different only in one, uh, in one way. Before, uh, we had to move up each time to, to, to pick a bigger algebra to include uh, the image of what we had so far. At uh, the first limit stage, we actually catch the tail. We have isomorphism between separable elementary submodels. And remember, we actually proved that, that, that uh, it has to happen, that uh, we have to have those fixed points uh, of, of, of an isomorphism. So now what we do is, well, we just move on to the next bigger algebra and apply a second part of that lemma to, to find uh, elementary image and so on. And of course, we have to be doing this for a while. So this is a very long construction. Uh, it, uh, it goes in all of one steps. And uh, here is uh, what is uh, described, um, all of these extents. And then at the end of the day, uh, once you construct all this uh, union of fixes in, in isomorphism and uh, union of sixes is the inverse of that isomorphism, right? Witness it, it's isomorphism. So, so uh, this is Kiefer's theorem. Now, uh, one uh, remark here, uh, continuum hypothesis is not mentioned uh, in the proof. Uh, well, you, don't, you just needed to, to know that, that the density character is all of one. 
but in the homework, you'll see that, that uh, uh, that's not going to happen for ceased algebras anyway, uh, unless uh, you do have Cartier hypothesis. You also, uh, there is a question about Hilbert space um, in category of uh, Hilbert space, the situation is different. Uh, there is, um, the, 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 uh, actually it's, it's not obvious from the exercise, uh, but, uh, but okay, so here is a appendix to the exercise. Uh, if you just take L2 of LF1, just Hilbert space um, of you know, the basis of cardinality LF1, it is saturated, regardless of whether continuum hypothesis holds or not. Okay, so uh, that is Tiesler's theorem. Any, any questions? Now we can move on to corollaries. Right, so uh, first um, remark is that, that uh, we actually proved a slightly more uh, precise statement. You see, uh, when we are constructing isomorphism between C and D, we could have started uh, with an isomorphism between separable elementary submodels. The rest of the constructions would have been identical and it is actually useful for us. So if you have isomorphism between separable elementary submodels, it's important they are elementary submodels, then uh, you can uh, base uh, the entire isomorphism uh, on, on that. Okay, I think, uh, let me, I think this is the same slide as the previous, oops. I think these two slides are, oh, no, 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 this is something else. Um, finally, so if if we have continuum hypothesis and they separable, and if we have two different non-principal ultra filters for natural numbers, uh, then there is an isomorphism between ultra powers. And moreover, uh, because we know by Walsh's theorem that A is elementary, I mean, the diagonal copy of A is elementary in AU, uh, we can uh, just uh, make sure that our um, isomorphism uh, extends, uh, commutes with this diagonal embedding of A. Uh, okay, so what that means, it means that that uh, ultra power is isomorphic, but also if you look at relative commutant, so this isomorphism is going to send uh, the relative commutant to the relative commutant because A goes to A. Right, so the commutant goes to commutant. So relative commutant are, are, are isomorphic as well. And uh, that's what the corollary says. So uh, if you have separable basis algebra, uh, then continuum hypothesis implies that all ultra powers uh, on N, so this on N is not necessary, um, are isomorphic and all relative commutants uh, in its ultra powers are isomorphic. Actually, all of this proves a little bit more. Uh, for the first part, uh, so for the first part that all ultra powers are isomorphic, you don't need separable. Uh, all that you need is that uh, the density character is at most LF1 uh, because ultra power is going to be of the same size. Uh, for relative commutants, it's a different story. You need separability really, uh, because uh, we don't really have control of uh, what relative commutants of subalgebras of density LF1 are. Okay. Uh, and uh, another curious corollary is that, that uh, there are non-isomorphic separable simple AF algebras with isomorphic ultra powers. And as I said, I, I don't know what are those. If you drop simple, uh, then, then there are many of them uh, that, that are uh, a billion uh, with isomorphic ultra powers. Um, okay, so so uh, this, oh yes, uh, just one more thing, um, which is uh, quite uh, curious. Um, you can have separable C algebras A and B, uh, which are elementally equivalent. Therefore, their ultra powers are elementally equivalent. However, their relative commutants in their ultra powers are not elementally equivalent. Um, so, so, so 
model theorist's way of, of thinking about this is that uh, if you just know theory of A, then uh, you cannot compute from it theory of uh, the relative commutant of A. So theory of A does not determine this uniquely. Uh, oh, hold on. Actually, okay, I have to be careful. Uh, this is uh, what uh, Kirchberg proved, uh, but uh, it is not a consequence. This is a stronger statement than what I wrote. No, sorry. Sorry, I'm forgetting what I wrote. Uh, no, it is the state, same statement. Um, right. I mean, he didn't state it this way. Uh, he stated it uh, differently. Uh, and I'll be happy to say more about uh, what uh, exactly what was his formulation. Uh, but uh, anyway, so we have something else to do. Uh, so I'll, I'll just leave it uh, as it is. I'll just give you a hint. This was in his uh, famous 2004 paper. Um, okay, so let's go on. So this answers uh, one half of Kirchberg's question. Remember, he asked, uh, are all these alta powers? Actually, he asked for relative commutants. Um, and uh, under continuum hypothesis, yes, they are all isomorphic. Now, MacDuff asked an uh, analogous question for a hyperfinite to one factor. Uh, this course is about cyst algebras, not about uh, two one factors, but nevertheless, uh, we can uh, do this uh, completely uh, without cheating for, from, from cyst algebra uh, point of view. So uh, let's take a look. Um, so R is the operator algebra which is obtained uh, by uh, taking this uh, two norm on the car algebra. Uh, tau is the unique tracial state of the car algebra. Look at this two norm. And now you don't take completion of the entire algebra uh, that would end up getting you some unbounded operators. You just take completion of each bounded ball separately and take union of all of that. And that is uh, the hyperfinite uh, to one factor. Uh, so, so obviously the, the right uh, notion of uh, ultra power here is the tracial ultra power. Uh, and uh, here it is. So uh, it, it's uh, usually denoted by U in the superscript. Uh, you take L infinity of R right, with the same um, bounded operator norm balls. Uh, modulo the sequence, uh, modulo those sequences that uh, converge in two norm to zero along the ultra filter. This happens to be two one factor again. Uh, uh, but uh, you see what matters for us is uh, that, that if you just take, oh, not this. If you take a tracial ultra power of of the car algebra. Um, uh, this is a feature of uh, ultra powers. Uh, it is, its bounded balls are automatically complete. Uh, it is really a very special consequence of countable saturation. You just open the window here. Really basically by countable saturation because a Cauchy sequence gives you a type that is consistent and then a limit uh, realizes the type. So uh, these tracial ultra powers are automatically complete and uh, you know, because it's obviously dense, uh, these are isomorphic. So really uh, talking about ultra powers, tracial ultra powers of R is the same as, as uh, talking about tracial ultra powers of algebra and similarly for the relative commutant. Uh, and uh, so corollary is that uh, if you have uh, non-principal ultra filters on N, then uh, the ultra power, tracial ultra powers of R are isomorphic uh, and so are the relative commutants. So uh, this answers half of uh, MacDuff's uh, question as well. Uh, and I could move on, but I just want to say uh, something uh, interesting is happening here. Um, if you know uh, about, um, first about cyst algebras, uh, Kirchberg proved uh, that, that uh, if A is infinite dimensional, then, then this relative commutant is always non-trivial. 
uh, it's always non-separable uh, and uh, so on. Uh, the analogous statement for two one factors is uh, false. Um, there is, uh, which actually goes uh, back to, to Murray and von Neumann, to, to for early papers on, uh, on, on uh, uh, von Neumann algebras. Um, if you take, for example, uh, two one factor associated with a free group, free non abelian group, um, then uh, it's you take its ultra power, a relative commutant of the diagonal copy is actually trivial, just the scalars, which means that, that uh, all relative commutants are, are isomorphic for very trivial reasons there, um, which is not too difficult, but, but, but uh, non trivial result for sure. But there is actually uh, something, uh, well, yes, and, and, and I should say also for R, uh, the, these, uh, these relative commutants are quite big. We'll come back to them later on. So this is again a uh, two-one factor. Uh, but here is a curious fact uh, that that, that uh, okay. I seem to have old version of slides. I can just see if huh. Hmm. Okay, so I'll just say it. Um, hmm. Now I'm worried that I'm looking at the old slides. Um, uh, the fact is, uh, if you take a tracial for Neumann algebra, if you take L infinity of uh, Lebesgue measure, say, on, on the interval. Uh, sorry, um, Ilias, can I ask a question? This, this yes, color, of course. I mean, the comment after the color seems to suggest that you're assuming CH. Oh, yes, 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 of course, of course. Yes, thank you. Right, so this is false. This is again false uh, without CH. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so you are using the fact that the, every countably saturated model are isomorphic. Yes, yes. So, so actually here, uh, right, right. So I, I'm just basically uh, using analogous statement uh, for, uh, for for these ones, uh, but uh, now working in the category of tracial ultra powers, right? So, so this is. Uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, this is a metal equivalent uh, in, in the tracial language to, to the Carl algebra and uh, it's countably saturated in tracial language. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so what I wanted to say is uh, if you look at a uh, big L infinity space here and again, look at the two norm. So what is two norm of F? Well, it's uh, just, just you know, the integral of F the lambda and take tracial ultra power with respect to this. Uh, then the isomorphism type of this does not depend uh, on the ultra filter and uh, you don't need to assume continuum hypothesis. So uh, even if CH fails, all of the ultra powers of this associated with uh, known principal ultra national numbers are isomorphic. So, so there is something different happening uh, in category of, of uh, tracial fundamental algebras than uh, what is happening in, in category of uh, seat algebras. Okay, so, uh, right, so, so um, I'll just read this. So uh, I just wanted uh, to uh, briefly uh, discuss uh, the other half uh, of the answer to Kirchberg's and uh, uh, Magda's so question. Can I ask you a question? So yes, in yes, case of, of if you take the ultra power not with respect to this um, tracial norm, then you get a different uh, isomorphic type, it's possible? You mean so operator norm? What, what norm are you taking? Depends uh, what, what norm are you using. Do you want operator norm? Yeah, yeah, the standard uh, norm. I mean, the, the you well, make the, the depends on what is standard norm. Uh, if if you if you're talking about C algebra operator norm, then yes, then you get a lot of non-isomorphic uh, ultra powers. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and actually, it's going to, to be clear now now that I move on to that. But yeah, thanks thanks for asking. So uh, right, but I just wanted to to finish uh, basically to squeeze a little bit more mileage. Uh, from all the work that we did. Uh, so here is something else. Suppose C is countably saturated of density character LF1, then it has two to LF1 automorphisms. 
Um, in particular, it, it must have outer automorphisms because uh, uh, its unitary group has density factor of one. Uh, so, so you cannot uh, handle that many automorphisms uh, by, by a small set of unitaries. Uh, now, uh, proof of this uh, requires just one more idea, uh, which is a useful idea for other purposes and some standard bookkeeping. So let's take a look at, at the idea first. Uh, here we are. So we have countably saturated algebra C. And here is A, which is elementary submodel of C, separable. And there is an element B uh, of C sitting outside A. Then uh, the set of all those elements in C, which realize the same type over A that B realizes over A, is non-separable. Right, so, so there is entire non-separable set here of, of fake copies of B. So all of those uh, behave exactly in the same way uh, as B does with respect to A. Now, uh, you can guess uh, why would we want to prove a lemma like this? Uh, remember, in the construction of uh, isomorphism, uh, in, in different steps, so what we had is we constructed isomorphism between, let's say, at limit stages between separable elementary submodels. And now we choose one element outside here, look at its type, move the type by an isomorphism, and say, well, but it's real life, so we can say it somewhere. Now, what this lemma tells us, not just that, that we can choose something, we actually have a huge choice. We have a non-separable set of, of possible extensions. And, and then you just need uh, some bookkeeping uh, to conclude the proof uh, once you have this. But let's see why is this true. It requires a little useful trick. So let T be the type uh, in C of B over A. Uh, okay, and now uh, let epsilon be the distance from B to A. Note that epsilon is greater than zero because A is closed. Okay, so uh, define the following. So T2, type in two variables, T2 of x, y. So here x and y are different variables. I should be talking about x0 and x1, but you know, this is easier. Uh, just look at T of x union T of y. And I also want to say, uh, that, that, that uh, to add the condition which tells me that uh, x uh, is uh, not the same as y. But that, that's where epsilon is here. Um, uh, just before I go on, you see in, in continuous logic, there is no negation. I cannot just say uh, t of x union t of y and x is not equal to y. That uh, you can think about uh, why is uh, that not going to work. You have to give a concrete bound, but they can just add something like uh, x minus y is, uh, well, I can just say greater or equal than epsilon. Oops. Okay, so if this type is uh, approximately satisfiable, then at least I, I can get uh, another element. Uh, and uh, th th then in a few tricks using bookkeeping, you can get LF1. But now why is this approximately satisfiable? Well, uh, let's look at our picture again. Here I have A, here I have B. Now, if I have finite subset uh, of uh, our type, it refers only to finite subset of A and it is approximately realizable in A itself. There is going to be some, some sort of a fake copy of C, which satisfies uh, all of uh, what is in this type up to some, I shouldn't call it epsilon, up to some delta. And now just look at that C0 and B together. Distance between them is at least epsilon. Therefore, 
even if that this condition is in this finite type, uh, this is realized. Now, uh, this way we got uh, two elements here. Uh, how do we get non-separable? Well, just assume that it is separable. Uh, if it is separable, well, th th then you just, uh, it is subset of some, it, there is basically countable dense set in it. And then you could just add instead of this condition, uh, just conditions saying that, that you are away from any, uh, no, no, I cannot say it. Yeah, no, no, uh, sorry. Uh, this, this was very silly what I said. Uh, basically to prove that it is not separable, you just look at, assume it's separable, look at all the realizations of that. Yeah, right. So, so, so uh, let's say all B N and in N countable dense set of realizations. And you just add the conditions saying that X minus B N is in norm greater equal than epsilon, uh, this very same epsilon, it, it's going to work. Uh, this will be realizable and, uh, and, and, and so, so you get it. Okay. All right, so, so back to this, uh, every type is either realized by a very big set or small set, uh, which even belongs to, to this model. Uh, okay, so now the bookkeeping part, this is very standard. Uh, look at uh, complete binary tree of height Aleph one. So its nodes are uh, countable sequences of zeros and ones, just functions from countable ordinals into zeros and ones under natural extension. Uh, and now, uh, uh, any maximal chain in this tree gives you a function from Aleph one into zero one. And uh, how do we proceed? Well, uh, you just construct isomorphism. Let me just see if I wrote it. I did, okay, good. Okay, uh, so, um, uh, right. So, so, so the point here is that uh, each node uh, of uh, these three is, is accountable but uh, this tree has Aleph, two to Aleph one many branches. And the idea is that to each one of those branches of, of this tree, we want to associate a distinct uh, automorphism. How do you show that they are all distinct? Well, uh, okay, so this is our very tall tree. Any two branches have to branch at exactly one spot. We just make sure that at, at that place, they disagree. That, that corresponding automorphisms send at least just one element to two different places. If you can do that, that then each one of those branches, if you can make sense uh, out of automorphisms along branches, uh, each one of those branches is going to give a different automorphism. Uh, and the proof modulo, uh, this bookkeeping and this trick is, is just like before. So we have C, which is countably saturated and state LF1. So we just write it as a union of continuous chain of separable elementary submodels, C alpha. And now for each uh, node uh, in this binary tree, uh, we find separable CS. So CS is one of these guys and DS is another one of these. Uh, actually DS is may, maybe not. CS is one of these, DS is something, we don't know. And isomorphism, uh, which sends CS to DS, which is onto. And uh, we want those isomorphisms to have some extra properties. Uh, this symbol here means that uh, T extends S as a function. Then uh, C S is elementary submodel of CT, DS is elementary submodel of DT, and uh, moreover, phi T uh, extends uh, phi S. Right. So along each branch, we are just doing something uh, coherent. Second, uh, for each S, you see this is these are two immediate successors of S. So this is what I said. Here you are at S and now you go left or go right. Uh, and there exists some X, which is in the intersection of these next algebras, such that phi uh, 
S0 and phi S1 disagree about it, right? Uh, and uh, this is really the key step. So before I read the rest, uh, how do we assure it? Well, here is CS. This is C, this is another copy of C. Here is uh, elementary embedding, here is DS. Well, we look at uh, this, which is going to be our X. Look at its type over CS, move it over here. Well, that type is consistent uh, with uh, whatever, uh, with its, it's uh, approximately satisfiable. And therefore, there is a non-separable set of elements which satisfy that same type. So we can, we just need two of them. We just need to choose two different elements and those are phi s zero of x and phi s one of x. And then we just proceed uh, just like before. Uh, right, so, so this is just uh, what you would expect, expect uh, that my inclusions go the wrong way. Yeah, okay, this one is good. And also the index set of, of C is, uh, is S, not alpha. Uh, sorry, this is S. Here, you mean? Yes. Yes, yes, thank you. I, I don't and You know don't have I... to worry about the fact that you want to cover uh, the target, so that you want the union of the DS to be covered? Uh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, so, so we just, just uh, assure uh, something like, uh, well, just basically assure it. Yes, but you're right. Right, so if you want uh, DS to, inc oh no, actually may maybe that that's, no, it's not, I just forget, but yes. Uh, that uh, something like uh, DS zero uh, includes, oh, no, 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 actually, no, uh, this, this wasn't a typo, Th thank you. Uh, so you see, uh, I had this C alpha in the beginning. So, uh, Right, so, so, so okay, this was correct, but CS0, so, so CS0 includes C alpha and uh, DS0 also includes C alpha and this one. So, so this is exactly what you said. So C alpha is the alpha uh, separable elementary submodel. I just uh, make sure that it, whatever are elementary submodels occurring in the next stage of the construction, they're going to cover uh, that separable submodel. Right, so, so this assures that union, that union of C sub F restricted to alpha for alpha less than alpha one includes union of C alphas, which is C itself. Admittedly, this was a lousy choice uh, that I'm calling this sequence C and this sequence C, but uh, yeah. So is it clear now? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's clear. Okay. It's clear to Matteo. It's clear to everybody. I mean, of course, it's clear uh, to a set theorists, but but uh, but I wanted to present this in a way uh, that is going to remove uh, any um, ambiguity about it. Here. Uh, okay. So uh, so so this basically extends uh, what we had uh, before. Uh, and answers half of, of all these questions, plus this question about automorphisms. Uh, before I go on, I should say that um, it is not known uh, whether uh, you can prove, let me just go back to the statement. Uh, it is not known whether, well, okay, what for this? No. Uh, here is, just say what is the statement that, that is not known. Uh, so question. So is there a model of Z is Fc such that uh, all automorphisms 
of C sub u. Uh, here, C is your favorite separable infinite dimensional C algebra. You can take m plus to infinity as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> of this uh, R, Trivial. Now, uh, part of the question is uh, what uh, trivial should mean. If, if there are two to the continuum, many of them, then they're, they're not trivial. But uh, one way to think about it uh, is, is this. Uh, you have L infinity of C. It maps onto ultra power. Here you have, uh, you have your uh, automorphism phi. Well, if you can somehow lift it, even to, to a CPC map or, or, or to something like that, to so, something that respects these coordinates, uh, which is reasonably well behaved, uh, then one could say that, that uh, this is a trivial automorphism. Uh, so uh, definitely it will be a model of Z of, of, of CH, but uh, we don't know. Um, I should say that, that, that uh, one promising, candidate for something like this is uh, Shellac's uh, Viva La Difference series of papers, part three in particular. Uh, he is proving that, that in some models of ZFC, uh, any isomorphism between ultra powers is, is a very simple form for some theories. Um, yeah, okay, so, so this may be a difficult problem. But uh, let's go on. Let's move to the dark side. Uh, so the dark side of the Kirchberg uh, and uh, MacDuff questions. Now, uh, in general, you see, if you have a very strong axiom, uh, a continuum hypothesis is a very strong axiom. So, so uh, it allows all sorts of uh, diagonalizations uh, along uh, all the reels. Um, actually, Sierpinski has an entire book in which he has uh, tons and tons of, of reformulations of CH and all sorts of peculiar, obscure uh, statements that, that just shouldn't be true. Uh, so, so it has many consequences. Well, then its negation shouldn't have many consequences. And it is true most of the time. So, so negation of, of CH is uh, mostly uh, virtually useless as an axiom. However, it has one application, it has one application at least, uh, and uh, here it is. Uh, you just need continual hypothesis to fail if you want to give the other answer to uh, Kirchberg's and uh, MacDuff's questions. So if CH fails, then every separable infinite dimensional C algebra has two to the continuum main on isomorphic ultra powers. And uh, you see, this is the cardinality of beta n. So, so basically there are as many non-isomorphic ultra powers as there are ultra filters on natural numbers. Uh, just, just if, if CH fails. And no note, uh, even if CH holds, uh, this space has uh, cardinality uh, two to all of one, uh, and yet uh, there is only one uh, ultra power up to isomorphism. So, so something curious is happening. And the uh, same happens for relative commutants uh, of cis algebras. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, important part of this is, is a nice result of Kirchberg's uh, that I mentioned before, uh, that uh, for cis algebras like these, relative commutants are quite big. And they're big enough for us to, to embed uh, whatever nasty uh, things we can embed into these ultra powers to assure that they are not isomorphic. Uh, there are also two to continue many non isomorphic ultra powers of the hyperfinite one factor, and uh, that many non isomorphic relative commutants. As I said, I don't want uh, to go into the proof of this. Uh, rather, I'll just try to convince you that, that uh, this just doesn't matter. Um, uh, but uh, let me just say a few things uh, for, for logicians. Uh, basically, uh, you see, Shellac's name here is, is highlighted. Uh, it's really, basically, he did all the work. Uh, we just uh, put uh, things together. Uh, this is a consequence of his uh, non-structure theory. So uh, in short, what is going on? If you have kappa, which is uncountable cardinal, uh, 
then there are many uh, linear orderings uh, of cardinality kappa which are substantially different. So then, then there are two to kappa very different linear orders of uh, cardinality equal to kappa. Let's so remember uh, when I started uh, with um, Cantor's proof uh, back and forth construction, I said, well, this miserably fails for uncountable cardinals. All of these are uh, dense uh, linear orderings without 10 points, they're all kappa dense. Uh, but very different means that, that uh, if you take uh, any structure of density character kappa, uh, then you can embed at most kappa of them into any one of them. Now, uh, how do you embed them uh, into these structures? Well, uh, C-star algebras have uh, this um, so-called order property. Uh, there is a formula that uh, defines order on the elements of C-star algebra. Actually, almost literally, it is the order of, of positive elements. Uh, if you have projections, then you can just take projections and, and, and uh, just take the order. It can be written by formula that one is greater than the other. Um, and uh, if you have uh, arbitrarily long chains in a C-star algebra, then in the ultra power, you're going to get a very long chain and uh, there is a beautiful construction of uh, ultra filter, uh, which uh, goes back to QNN basically. Uh, you give me a linear ordering on, of cardinality continuum, and you also give me a C-st algebra, and this formula which defines order, then I, I can construct an ultra filter, uh, which will have the property at, in the ultra power, this linear order will embed into the cyst algebra. And because there are so many different uh, uh, linear orderings, you just conclude that, that, uh, that there have to be uh, many uh, different ultra powers. And the same goes for relative commutants. Uh, in case of uh, two one factors, ordering is a bit more difficult to define. Uh, one of the reasons is what I said before about uh, Ultra, tracial ultra powers of L infinity, uh, you see a billion tracial phonemon algebras uh, don't have that order property. They're, they're ultra powers are isomorphic. You cannot embed complicated orders. You need to somehow take advantage of non-commutativity. But uh, anyway, so, so uh, basically uh, this is all beautiful and interesting and, uh, and great. Uh, but uh, if you care only about classifying separable uh, objects, this is completely relevant. You just, you can just forget about this. So let me try to convince you that, that uh, this is the case. Oh yeah, okay. here it is, here it is, right. So this is what I said. Um, all threshold ultra powers of this are isomorphic, even in CH fails. Um, Okay, so, so uh, for all practical purposes, all ultra powers, I mean, all ultra powers of separable ceased algebras associated uh, with uh, non principal ultra filters on natural numbers are isomorphic. Uh, so here is a rather horrible definition, and uh, it will be clear why it's easier to, to just assume continuum hypothesis and have a nicely stated theorem uh, than not to assume it uh, and state. Uh, theorem which is as good. So we have two non-separable metric structures. Let's just think C star algebras here. It doesn't really matter. So here C and D. Uh, so here is the, the key notion, a sigma complete back and forth system between C and D. Uh, this is really the, the, the thing. So it is a poset uh, which has a whole bunch of properties. And here they are. So its elements are partial isomorphisms. Now, what that means is uh, here is C, here is D. AP is separable, BP is separable here, and VP uh, is an isomorphism between them. So I should say here that these two are separable. 
right? So, so, so think of elements of F as separable attempts to construct an isomorphism. Uh, the ordering is defined uh, in the most natural way. Uh, Q uh, has more information than P, Q is bigger than P. Uh, if uh, AP is subset of AQ, BP is subset of BQ and phi Q extends phi P, right? So, so it is, uh, Q is slight, slightly bigger attempt at constructing isomorphism. Uh, if you are familiar with forcing, you may be annoyed by me but for, for going this way, uh, but let's say I'm using Jerusalem convention and um, so that's more natural here. Uh, for every uh, P in F and for any element of, oops, A is C and B in D, uh, we can find bigger condition in F so that, that uh, A belongs to, to this uh, uh, part of A and uh, B belongs to this part of B. So, so in other words, Here is C, here is D. So no matter how you give me a condition like this and you point to two elements here, I can extend that condition to absorb A and B in domain and range of, of that uh, partial isomorphism respectively. Uh, and uh, last condition F is sigma complete. So if I have increasing sequence of conditions, I can just take unions uh, and take closures to, to get subalgebras, extend maps, uh, and that still belongs to F. Right, so, so uh, it's called uh, back and forth uh, because of A and B, right? So A is uh, back uh, and uh, B is forth. Uh, looking here and the sigma complete part is, is here, right? So at, uh, at countable stages, you don't uh, exhaust. Um, uh, your, your, your structure. Now, uh, okay, this is, uh, you know, definition that one has to stare at uh, for a while to absorb it, uh, but, but uh, I'd like to argue that you've seen it several times, except that uh, in case of continuum hypothesis, uh, it is much easier uh, to look at. So let's take a look at here. Uh, so uh, if C and D have density character Aleph one, then uh, this uh, assumption of the existence of, of such a structure is as strong as, as an isomorphism. And uh, you've seen the proof. So what does the proof look like? Well, you have C, you have D, you have these filtrations of C and D into uh, continuous chains elementary submodels, uh, but you also, in addition to that, have this back and forth system. So you just take first condition your system to contain, let's say uh, elements of the system are in green. So here is AP, which includes C0 and make sure that BP includes D0. Okay, now uh, you give me an element here Actually, okay, you give me an ele any element here, I can extend my condition. And uh, okay, so, so it, yeah, okay. So, so, so you see, if, if you give me countably many elements here, I can just keep on extending and take unions. So I can take next condition to include C1 and so that it, uh, its range includes D1. And uh, by, by doing it this way, I'm just choosing increasing Aleph one sequence of conditions in F uh, with the property that uh, the domains cover C and the ranges cover D. So at the end of the day, I get an isomorphism, right? So uh, continuum hypothesis is really used to, to straighten a sigma complete back and forth system to linearize it. So you don't have to worry about uh, you know, funny things going on. Oh, I mean, the, the converse uh, from implications from two, from, from two to one, we proved before, right? That every isomorphism has to be of that form. And that, that was one of our starting points of our um, discussion. Uh, and here's another 
um, uh, theorem, uh, if you have countably saturated matrix structures, then uh, they are elementally equivalent if and only if there is a SEMA complete back and forth system between C and D. Now, this is exactly what the proof that CH implies C isomorphic would be gives in the absence of CH. You see why? Let me just say a word about that. You have C, you have D. Um, by the way, uh, note uh, in my definition of SEMA complete back and forth system, I didn't require those uh, AP to be elementary submodels of C or BP to be elementary submodels of D. It makes no difference. Uh, on, on, on a cofinal subset, uh, you will have uh, that property. So we'll just construct one which has, uh -huh, uh, oh, uh, which has this property. Uh, and um, let's see. So, so, so you just choose a separable elementary submodel of C. And now by universality property of countably saturated structures, there is an embedding of it uh, into D. So what is my F? F is set to all pairs, A, B, uh, pairs, triples. Uh, set to all triples, A, B, phi, such so that A is elementary in C, B is elementary in D. They're both separ separable, and phi is an isomorphism between A and B. Right. So uh, the universality property uh, of saturated models is exactly what you need for the density property. Right? If you have condition like this and you have something sitting outside, uh, bigger, you just put it in bigger elementary submodel, use downward Lenihan's column theorem, and then use universality to extend it to a bigger system. And similarly, uh, going back uh, from here to the other one. Uh, the sigma complete part is, is a triviality. It is uh, just that the union of elementary chain is elementary again. All right, so, so it is the same proof, except that the statement doesn't look uh, most aesthetical. Okay, so I just have enough time to say a few words about uh, other uh, massive uh, quotients uh, in this context. Uh, so uh, the asymptotic sequence algebras, I'm not going to go over the proofs. Uh, they, they are they are all uh, in the book, so uh, so you can just skip them. Uh, so remember, uh, if you have uh, B, then C zero of B is all sequences on infinity uh, that uh, in norm converge to zero, and B infinity, uh, which is uh, this quotient, is the asymptotic sequence algebra. Uh, it is also very popular uh, in classification. Uh, one advantage is, uh, as compared to ultra powers, uh, is that you don't need axiom of choice. So you don't need the ultra filters. It's just defined that there's only one. Right? There is no question of how many uh, there are. There's only one, uh, but, uh, and also uh, B naturally diagonally embeds uh, in, into, into this. Uh, one disadvantage uh, is that uh, Walsh's theorem fails. So, so typically, if you embed B diagonally uh, into, into B infinity, uh, this is not going to be an elementary embedding. Sometimes it is, sometimes it is, but uh, if B is simple, for example, it, it, it's not going to be elementary. So uh, what, what can we do? Well, there is a beautiful uh, theorem of uh, Gassani, uh, which is, uh, belongs to, to what is called the Pfefferman Watt type, Pfefferman and Watt uh, type theorem, uh, which tells us that uh, if we know theory of B, then we can figure out what is theory of B infinity. This is a very special case of theorem. Uh, it uh, also uh, makes sense if you have sequence of BNs, if you know theories of all the BNs, you can compute uh, a theorem of the corresponding reduced product. Um, 
I'm not telling you uh, how to compute it because it is messy business. So it doesn't, uh, statement doesn't look nice. It, it's a great theorem and, and very useful, uh, but um, uh, it, it's, it's not, uh, you know, it's a kind of messy business. Now, uh, why is this useful among other things? Remember for countable saturation, uh, how do we prove countable saturation of uh, anything? Well, uh, choose realizations, partial realizations of finite uh, bits of the type, and then uh, just chop them up, put them together while assuring that that uh, type is satisfied by, by uh, that uh, thing. Now, uh, in case of uh, B infinity, we can do exactly the same uh, because uh, uh, Gastemi's theorem uh, makes it possible to, to, to chop up uh, these pieces that uh, satisfy finite segments of the type while controlling how uh, are they going, by, by basically assuring that they're going to satisfy the same finite pieces of the type uh, in, the, in, in the limit. Uh, it is a bit messier uh, then in case of ultra powers, there are all sorts of complicated things. But as I said, I don't want to go over the proofs. Uh, they're all in the book. I'll be happy to talk about them if anybody wants to talk, but, but, but uh, it is not really um, uh, something that you want to see in public, I guess you just uh, read it. So consequence is that uh, B infinity is countably saturated. Remember, it was very easy to prove it. It's, it's a quantifier free countably saturated, uh, but to, to get hold of quantifiers, you have to, to do something on trivia. Okay, so, uh, so countable saturation holds. Uh, and uh, I want to, to say a few more things. So here is a theorem which was proved after the book went to print, uh, but um, it is uh, very relevant here. So if you take, have any separable ceased algebra B, then we have the following. First, uh, B is uh, isom... Oh, this was supposed to be elementally equivalent. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Sorry, uh, this, this is a bad typo. There is infinity missing here and one bar missing here. So uh, the asymptotic sequence algebra is elementally equivalent to B tends for C of K. So basically uh, this is proved by, by just analyzing what this theorem here says, right? So, so uh, what is this theory? Well, it is theory of B tends for continuous functions on the Cantor space. By the way, uh, this algebra here, it is just algebra of continuous functions from Cantor space into B. Right, so the theory of this, and, and you know, if you stare at this algebra for long enough, you'll see that, that it does resemble this. It, it's it's, it's not, not actually insane uh, to, to think of it. Um, so second, uh, slightly more precise statement is uh, any diagonal under quotation marks of B tends for C of K inside here is an elementary submodel. Uh, there is no canonical diagonal copy, but th th there are many copies which deserve to be called diagonal. Uh, just uh, in the unital case, it's easier to see what is going on because you have a big center and you can just take a subalgebra of the center uh, isomorphic to C of K and uh, make sure that it, uh, this is isomorphism. So finally, from, from the first two part, uh, CH implies that asymptotic sequence algebra is isomorphic to ultra power, this is K, uh, to ultra power of this for any non-principal ultra filter U on N. Right, so uh, in that sense, for all practical purposes, uh, asymptotic sequence algebra is just a special case of an ultra power uh, after you stabilize your ceased algebra by tensoring with, with continuous functions and compact operators, uh, which to a large extent explains why uh, ultra powers and asymptotic sequence algebras are interchangeable in many arguments uh, in classification. Uh, I'll just state one more theorem whose proof is omitted from 2017. Uh, under continuum hypothesis, uh, ultra power of the Carl algebra and the relative commutant of the Carl algebra and its ultra power are actually isomorphic. 
Now, uh, if you've been uh, listening uh, to, to all this uh, and, and uh, you can guess that, that what is really going on, I'll just write A for the car algebra. This is really an elementary submodel. And they are both countably saturated. So, so CH implies that they are isomorphic. And even you have this nice uh, back and forth system. Um, as I said before, uh, this is not necessarily countably saturated for any separable cyst algebra, but, but uh, for the car algebra it is. And uh, if you are into classification, you know, definition of strongly self-absorbing cyst algebras, uh, theory applies to all of them. And also uh, to, to, to the, uh, to the hyperfinite to one factor with the threshold ultra power. And uh, yeah, okay, I want to say a few more things, but but, but I'll just put them uh, up. So it's it not, uh, what remains, what I wanted to say is not, um, can be skipped. So I'll just stop here.